For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner at Manitoba Ag Days and pleased to be joined now by Don Campbell of Roga Drone. And Don, uh, obviously a drone hanging behind us here. Can you fill us in on, uh, on what this drone is designed for and, and the application that you see for it? So uh, this drone is designed specifically for uh, broadacre applications, aerial applications of uh, pesticides. Um, it's a little bit different than uh, some of the rotary drones that you see out there spraying now. It's a hybrid drone that has vertical takeoff and land. Uh, the way it operates in flight is when the drone's in the air, it, the back rotors will rotate 90 degrees and that'll give it the thrust. And then it flies basically like a manned aircraft with the wings carrying 70 to 80% of the load. Okay, so that would give it a different uh, drift pattern or dispersion pattern than, than other designs of drones? Yeah, quite a bit different than the rotary drones. You don't get as much uh, downwash. Uh, it's designed so to eliminate some of the vortices that you see on some planes. Uh, those vortices uh, have an effect probably 15 to 20 feet off the ground. Uh, after that, you lose that downdraft off the wings. Where are we at, I guess the big question, where are we at in terms of being able to use a drone like this in Canada right now? In Canada, it's still the million dollar question. Uh, we've worked with uh, PMRA probably over the last four or five years. Um, they're starting to see that this isn't going to go away. They've uh, actually designated some people in PMRA to have a look at this issue. Last October we had two approvals from PMRA on mosquito larvicides. I know there's a lot of uh, research authorizations out there that are being looked at now. So hopefully, you know, we can't give a timeline, but hopefully this year we're going to see some more approvals for pesticides. Is the onus on the registration, the companies that have registered the products to apply for the, the change to the label to have allow for drone application or UAV application, or, or is it on PMRA to actually follow through on, on allowing this? Where, where is it being held up right now? So the registrants or the chemical companies are the ones that would have to uh, apply to get it approved on their labels. Uh, and that's kind of the process that's being gone through right now. Once they submit the data that PMRA recognizes, they grant the approval on the label for drones. How would this, oh, I should also note, I guess, uh, this is only for products that are regulated by PMRA. So biologicals, some fertilizer products, those could already be applied with a, with a drone at this time? Yeah, that's correct. We, we are limited right now to biologicals, fertilizers, biostimulants. Uh, some of those products have a really good fit for this drone. Uh, if people are using them at, uh, some of the rates are half liter to three quarter liter per hectare, so we can go out and spray, you know, 40 acres at a crack with this drone. So it really shines in that area. I know some of the organic producers are looking at amino and acids, uh, things like that, uh, where this has a really good fit. I, I think that. Uh, we are going to see pesticides being approved for drone application soon. I th right now, I think Canada is the only country in the world that doesn't have uh, some form of drone spraying. That was going to be my next question, uh, particularly the U.S. What, where the, where's the U.S. at now compared to Canada on this? Uh, the U.S. is a little bit farther ahead. They have some spraying, and I think it's on a state-by-state -state basis. Um, I don't know exactly. I know there are drone companies buying some products down there. We have two of these drones, or one drone, I should say, in Australia right now. We're taking two more in April. Uh, their EPA, which is our PMRA down there, is a little less stringent, and they have been using drones probably for five or six years down there now. So we'll be doing testing on this drone there this spring. From PMRA's perspective, are they going to, do you see them differentiating between different types of drones due to the different spray pattern? Or I guess just like a, a field sprayer, there's different, not everybody applies the same way, uh, not every model applies the same way, a lot of it comes down to operator, there are other variables there as well too. Yeah, it's pretty hard to, okay. to speak on PMRA's half, they're going to, how they're going to view that. Um, there are aerial application labels already on most of the pesticides. I think what we're trying to do is follow those labels as precisely as we can 
uh, the recommendations that are on the labels to make uh, approvals quicker for the drone industry. So is that the simplest path to simply have UAVs or drones go under that aerial application label, or do you see it being a separate step or separate uh, wording in the in the label as well? No, I think that's what we're trying to do is, is match the existing labels. Some people have kind of uh, had a look at the reduced carrier volumes and reduced pesticide. I think that's just going to slow us down. That's going to be a long process. If we can match what the label rates are now, I think that's going to be a quick little, quicker approval rating. Okay. And I guess handling of chemicals and the risk areas, the actual risk areas around this would be the same whether you're filling a, an, an airplane or whether you're filling a, a drone. Yeah, we, we, we just have to follow the recommendations on the label as they're written now. All your PPE and equipment that are required would be on the label. Well, thanks for your time and your insight, this update on where things are at with spraying with drones in Canada today, John. Enjoy the rest of Ag Days. Good. Thank you very much. I appreciate the interest. Have a good day.